right people right. like that. So in the opening statement just about the game this past weekend and okay. then the state game? First of all, uh, thank y'all. You ready to start, John? You ready to start? Okay. Uh, first of all, appreciate y'all being here. Appreciate the coverage of uh, the university. Appreciate the coverage of our, our basketball program. Um, you know, of course, this is uh, – we, we've gotten off to our start. You know, I, I think I'm probably more nervous in our before the exhibition game every year than than any other time during the year. Um, I've been blessed to have done this job. This is my 32nd year as a head basketball coach. So, uh, I, you know, it, but I still get nervous and, I, and, I, and nervous in a good way. Uh, but it's good to kind of get that exhibition game behind us. Um, of course, after watching the film, we we we. Uh, we did some good things, um, but it, it, what it does, it draws into focus a lot of things that we have to get better at. Um, and especially uh, with a quick turnaround uh, against a, a team, uh, Caliber Mississippi State, of course preseason top 25, a very experienced team, great great coach. Um, so, you know, but that's good. Those are the type of teams that we want to play. Uh, as far as, you know, talking about heading into Mississippi State, we want to be able to that's going to help us and um, should be a great environment on Sunday. It's a great opponent. It's a great cause. So we're excited about it. Uh, for those of you that see this prior to that game, of course, tickets are available. Uh, hope to, hopefully we'll have a full crowd in here. I know Mississippi State, they traditionally bring a, a good crowd, and, and so I hope we'll, have, we'll be able to counter that. And, um, but anyway, it's exciting to have Mississippi State come here. It's the first time that they've been here since 1996, the year they went to the Final Four. I was actually in attendance of that game. Great game. They, they scored late to tie the game and ended up beating us in overtime. Of course, had a great run in the postseason, went on to the went on to win the SEC and uh, went to the Final Four that year. And uh, But a uh, great series. Appreciate Coach Pete Jans and those guys and at Mississippi State uh, being willing to do this. And uh, it's for a great cause to help uh, our, our fellow Mississippians that uh, had some, some, you know, a lot of damage and uh, the tornadoes last year spring so all the money that we raised this coming Sunday will go toward them. Okay, um, how do you guys go about approaching this exhibition? I know like compared to Delta State you're trying to get everybody in there. Is yeah. this a game you play to win? I mean how do you We play on uh, very simple. We, we're going to treat it. We, we, we are treating it. We treat them all like we're we're playing to win. And uh, they're going to be playing to win. I don't think this is because just of the I think of the natural uh, rivalry between the two schools. I, I think you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see both teams wanting to make a statement. And um, I think it's, you know, I, I know Mississippi State's gonna play to win. We're gonna be playing to win. Um, uh, you mentioned, of course, against Delta State. Yeah, we were very fortunate to get everybody in the game. And that's really, to be honest with you, that's our goal every single game. Of course, it doesn't work out like that all the time. Um, but but you're gonna see, you'll see both groups. Uh, I, 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 of course, I'm speaking for Mississippi State. Um, will be. You, it won't be your normal exhibition game. I'll say that. And uh, so we're 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 going to do everything we can to put our best foot forward. But win or lose, again, we have to keep things in perspective, and we have to get we have to improve. We our goal was to improve every single day at practice, and of course these games are, are, are great opportunities for us to play someone else. And, and again, as I mentioned in the very first statement, gives a chance to really focus on all the things that we need to work on. And uh, Mississippi State, of course. Uh, poses a lot of challenges and, and they're going to win a lot of basketball games this year so I think it's great for us to be able to play someone of that caliber to help to help us prepare for the regular season. To bounce off that what's it mean for you in this program if you do beat Mississippi State in an exhibition? Well I, I, I mean of course I'm competitive and, and uh, being a Southern Miss guy you know you, you grow up and, and you hear so much about Mississippi State great great tradition you know Richard Williams who, who had such a great run in the, in the late 80s to, you know, uh, early 2000s or whenever it may have been that, that coach was the head coach there. But, you know, I learned so much basketball from him. And I've always had a great admiration for Mississippi State basketball. I really have. And uh, the way that they, they've had a lot of success going back to Coach McCarthy back in the, in, the, in the late 50s and early 60s where they were actually the dominant team in the SEC for a period of time. And um, had a cousin played up there. Leland Mitchell was a all SEC forward down in Kill. Um, so anyway, a lot of lot of admiration for their program. I've always been a great admirer of Coach Jans, their, their present coach. He's one of the top coaches 
uh, defensive-minded coaches in the country um, and has done an incredible job uh, in a very short period of time at Mississippi State as he, he's entering his second year. Of course, his first year there, he gets him to the NCAA tournament. And um, so anyway, I, yeah, would it, would it be a any, any time that you're playing someone in the stature of Mississippi State, it would be a great win for our program. But of course, we, again, we've got to keep things in perspective and, and, and what's, you know, after the game, both teams are going to be zero and zero. Uh, so we've got to use that to help us get ready for our season. But I, I, think, I think it would mean a lot to our fan base. I do. Um, it, it, it would mean a lot. So, you know, just any time you play state, I don't care if you're playing in a flag football game. <laughs> it's, I think it's, it's exciting, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm an old school Southern Miss guy. I remember growing up us playing Mississippi State annually in football, playing Ole Miss annually in football. Um, and that hasn't happened a lot. And a lot of that has had to do with our success. You see what happens when we play in, play in the two in-state schools in baseball. It's sold out. You can't get a ticket. And, 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 and again, I would love to get that opportunity to play them in basketball. This is the first year since I've been at, at Southern Miss. Of course, we play Ole Miss and Biloxi in Biloxi on December 23rd, and, and to have Mississippi State come here to Hattiesburg to play. So I hope, hopefully, this will be the start of a, a great relationship or rekindling a relationship in a great series. But, you know, as far as basketball, we've only played Mississippi State twice in the last 27 years. And, Coach Jans, you know, when, when he took over, he didn't quite understand the why that was. You know, he, 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 he said, dang, I, I didn't even realize that until somebody in Starkville told him, yeah, we've only played him twice in 20, in 27 years. I just think it's good for the state. I think it's good, it's good for both universities. Uh, it's good for basketball in our state for the two schools to be playing. So that's how I feel about it. Why do you think that's the case that they don't play at all? I'm not really sure. You know, I, 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 I hear what I hear, you know, and, and – uh, you know, uh, well, we got, they, you know, they don't have anything to gain and so forth. But, you know, I disagree with that. I think, again, you're playing, you know, what do you have to gain by playing someone from North Dakota? Or, you know, I mean, you know, it, it's, you know, we're a Division One team. We're, we're, of course, have had a lot of success. We have a proud program here. Um, it goes back, you know, many decades and, and um, have had our share of success. So, you know, I, again, I think, and again, I think Coach Jans has done that. I think Coach Beard did that at Ole Miss in terms of scheduling us that it's, it's good for everyone. And I think sometimes if we would all take that attitude that it's good for the whole state and we look and start looking out for what's best for the state of Mississippi and, and the people that live here, and that's, what, that's what's driven this about going back to the charity. Uh, you know, we're doing something. You have two schools coming together to do something good for people that, that are, are, are one of us. And, and I think that's a great thing. And again, my hat's off to Coach Jans, Mississippi State University, their athletic and school administration for allowing this to happen. And of course, I know our, our Jeremy McLean and Joe Paul have been 100% on board since the idea was hatched. So why they, why they won't play, I know why they won't play us in football. You know, I mean, that, that goes back to we had so much success as, as Southern Miss began to rise in stature in the in the mid to late uh, 70s, and we were playing every year, and we began. It, it was it it was tough for them to beat us, and uh, so. But you know, things have also changed a lot. There's you know the the, 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 the financial uh, uh, situation and difference between the two schools is pretty significant, and that's probably not going to change due to the fact that they're in the in the SEC. But Hey, that still doesn't. That we we still accept the challenge, so we we welcome this, and I think it's a it's a great opportunity for both schools. The starting five that we saw against Delta State is that what you kind of envision being the starting lineup coming the right? You know, we, we we're probably uh, we, I think we have nine or ten uh, players that are capable of starting. Um, that we had to start somewhere. We've got the, the great thing is we have a lot of competition going on. Great competition. Uh, at certain positions. Uh, we have a number of players that are coming off injuries. Uh, for, for instance, Tegra is a, he's only been, at, he's only had a cast off of his arm less than two weeks. And, uh, you know, and, and so he's just beginning to find himself. Victor Iwako, he's just beginning to find himself um, as he's transferred in here, learning a whole new system. Um, you know, Don, Kobe, Kobe Montgomery hasn't played a competitive game. That, that other night was the first time he play, has played a competitive game in, in, in well over, you know, about a year and a half. And so, uh, you know, it, we're, we're still in the stage of kind of evaluating everybody um, and really evaluating 
our our combinations and and rotations and what i'll say about that is sometimes your five best individual players don't always make make your best team sometimes you have that they have to work together as a unit coach juan cardona talks about an orchestra out there you know they have to they have to they have to operate like an orchestra and everybody do their job but at the end of the day that the synergy of all those people working together you have a beautiful sound and uh you know we're still not there yet and um you know of course we 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 all got spoiled last year by the group and um and so this year's a different team but they, they have some very some some advantages in their own right that last year's team didn't have um we're a little more athletic on the front line than we were last year and uh and of course i think you'll see that i think we have a chance to even we were, we were really good defensively last year under coach juan's uh guidance and i think we've even got a chance to be better but uh, I, I don't know necessarily. I, I would be it all. We're going to evaluate every single day at practice, and we're going to evaluate uh, every single game. And, and these early, early games are very critical to us, kind of seeing if somebody separates themselves a little bit. So we're looking. We hope we can get the five, our five best players on the floor working together. But some, again, if, if, it, if, if it's four of our best players and, and another player that comes off the bench that can that can help us be synergistic, then we'll go that way. That's what we're looking for. Coach, the news with Neftali, do you guys expect he can return at some point this season? And well, how you, how you... I, again, I, I can only go on what our medical people, you know, when it initially, uh, when he initially turned his ankle one day, we kind of thought that was all it was. And then the, then the scare was that maybe something had gone wrong. Of course, he had surgery at the end of the season. And then we got great news on that, that, that his, his, surgery had really held together well had done as exactly what it was supposed to have done and uh, that was unaffected and so this is a separate injury um, the initial word we got that he he could be back within a couple of weeks and would most likely be back for the season opener and um, but he also had to go back to the doctor to get he was going back to the doctor uh, to get cleared to start practicing and uh, he had shown some improvement but they saw they saw a, a, a part of his new injury that was not healed, and they made a, I mean, literally made a quick decision. And, and I, I want to say this, we have great medical, our athletes here, not just basketball players, have access to some of the best medical care in the country. And because of the location of Hattiesburg, you have two, a lot of specialists here. You have a uh, two big hospital systems operating in Hattiesburg because of our location. So we're a beneficiary of that, and uh, he's in great hands. And But the first and foremost thing that we do in our program is we want to look at what's best for our players and their health and safety, and then secondly, their future. And, uh, yes, it's important that we win basketball games. And you know what? If we were maybe a little bit uh, um, selfish on, on our own sense, we may have could have pushed the issue a little bit. But we want to see him healthy uh, again for his future and not not do something that would damage him in the short term. Uh, the word that we've gotten as of as of Monday that the surgery went incredibly well. Uh, uh, they solved the issue, and uh, of course, it, they said that it could possibly be as early as ten weeks. So ten weeks, when I kind of counted it in my head, put us right out about Christmas time. And, uh, but we can give you, as of course, that's been just a few days ago. So if y'all will continue to ask me these things, I'll, I will try to have a medical update in preparation for that each time that we maybe have a weekly uh, uh, meeting and, and um, uh, uh, press conference. So whichever way that we handle that, I'll try to do a better job. Or maybe even if y'all would like, I would have our trainer or Todd McCall, who's over sports medicine, Southern Miss, come in and, and uh, answer some questions that can get more specific. It was his ankle surgery on his ankle. Foot, yes, Foot. Okay. yes. Any update on Corbello? Um, we, we did have an update. Um, there's a, uh, a law firm from Jackson uh, that's handling his waiver. Uh, uh, they're also handling two Ole Miss players that are in the exact same situation. Um, it's, a, it's a law firm that has a lot of um, experience dealing with the NCAA. So, um, we're very appreciative of the support of our school administration for allowing that to happen and, and going in that direction. Uh, of course, working directly with our compliance office. And um, so what we were told uh, uh, two days ago is that uh, they have asked for some more information. And as, as of course, it's a, the 
it's kind of a new thing but as it's gone they have a a committee and so he's evidently made it past kind of the initial phase it's now going to go to a committee to see if 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 his case warrants immediate eligibility or not and supposedly and again please don't hold me to this I think y'all would understand and anything from NCAA this is a little you know maybe not be exactly like I'm saying I don't not plan I'm not our compliance office I'm not Ryan Lee's I I'm just telling you the part that had been passed on to me that he they from that point when it was referred to committee they have 10 business days the NCAA has a maximum of 10 business days maybe we'll hear something today maybe we'll hear something over the weekend you know next week we certainly hope to but I will say this he's a dynamic player he's a he's an impact type player he's a potential all first first team Sunbelt player of the year type candidate possible all-american very very dynamic player and he like NEFTA are game changers so hurts us if we don't have them but you know I will also say this that happened Neff got hurt last year after the Vanderbilt game and and I thought Mo Arnold and of course Nico Aguirre did an incredible job and and so we're experienced dealing with not having him but it's certainly you know you can't help yourself but think about hey what if if you've got if you got NEFTA and you got Andre out there at the same time you know how good could we possibly be in the backcourt of course pairing him with what we already have of course we hadn't even mentioned Austin Crowley yet there's other guys is he allowed to play in Sunday's exhibition we're still waiting on a clarification of that we've heard two different things we've heard yes and we've heard we're not sure but we're we're definitely checking on that and and if y'all want to stay in touch with us personally or through Jack hopefully we'll have word on that maybe even by today but we're 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 gonna plan on him playing unless we hear different correct and I and I because I have been asked that coach will you play him even though maybe the NCAA has hasn't made a decision yet on his regular season eligibility because there are instances and circumstances where they can play in the exhibition games as long as they're happy they don't play in the regular season so we know that he's not cleared yet to play in the regular season game and we're getting clarification if he'll be ready to play on Sunday or not I know he would like to and then of course our, our philosophy is it to, because we don't know but we would prepare as such that he was going to be ruled eligible even though we know that the percentages of the NCAA approving these waivers is not real high but we do think he has a good case but our, our goal is for him to play Sunday how do you think how do you think he's handled just this uncertainty of you know, going through this process of not I feel sorry for him I, I really do uh, and, and now he's he's not one to feel sorry for himself and I know at times he's gotten really down about it um, uh, just like NEFTA, I think both of those guys are have had had a had a rough go, and um, I mean NEFTA's what NEFTA's been through the last three years. I, I know very few people that would have they they would have just quit. Uh, you know, surgery at Mer his last year at Mercer ends up missing most of the season last year. We get right to the point where we're in the league, and we you know of course we think we're on the cusp of maybe doing some great things, and he gets hurt just before we go down and play in the conference tournament. Um, and then, of course, he had some incredible personal tragedy over the summer, you know, with his family, and he's losing his father. He lost a brother. And, I mean, he has just been through one. It's just like, like what's going to hit him next? And uh, But he is a great young man. He, he's tough. He loves it at Southern Miss. Uh, he loves the people here. Of course, he's got a, a very, very strong relationship with Coach Juan. It's more like a father figure to him. And that's kind of, I think, the love that he receives – here has been very instrumental in him being able to kind of hang in there. Andre's been through a, a similar situation. Of course, he doesn't have the personal tragedy in his life that that Neff had to deal with. But you know, you're talking about a player that was uh, at Illinois, went to the NCAA tournament, a big time player and, and contributor on their team that went to the NCAA tournament, was the Big Ten Sixth Man of the Year as a true freshman, a player that was already being projected in the NCAA, I mean, in the NBA draft. Another, uh, uh, of course, uh, possible uh, preseason All-American the following year, um, and suffered so had gone through it has gone through a series of injuries and concussions uh, that that again you know it, it's it's very well documented and, and of course more and more is coming out about concussions now. But how that not only 
you know, it's, it's one thing to say, uh, uh, break your arm, you know, and, and, and of course, but, but a concussion has a debilitating effect on your uh, uh, mental health, make, the depression that comes along, and, and for a competitor to miss uh, uh, months of so uh, consecutively of, of something that he's worked so hard at. And, and you take a young man, he's a young man from Puerto Rico, whose goal is to, to play in the NBA, and all of a sudden feels like that because of circumstances and injuries that 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 dream is beginning to fade away. You know that's tough, and that's what he's had to deal with over the last couple of years. And uh, and so, but he's on the upswing. I will tell you that. And again, just like Nefta, he's got a great support system here uh, with our our, our family, uh, our basketball family that we call La Familia. But he's also got a great uh, support here from the people of Hattiesburg. And I, I must say this, uh, just because I know we're, we're talking a little more at length today and not as focused like on a ball game uh, from like the other night. Um, the strength of Southern Miss is our people. It, it is. It's the strength of our university. It's the strength of, of our Hattiesburg and South Mississippi community. And, and, and generally, when we get a player or a family that comes here on a visit, and all of our players will tell you this. You look at our – we have players from Mississippi, but we have players from all – really all over the country and now beginning to have them from all over the world. They feel a certain welcoming here that, that they don't feel in other places, and that's unique. And it, it, you can't put a price tag on that. Some people may have more financial resources than we do, um, but I tell you what, you can't put a price tag on when people truly care for you. And uh, and that's what we have here, and they feel it. And uh, – that's why you see very few players. Uh, uh, you, you see that they're they're happy here for the most part, and um, and and the ones that that visit here, that they 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 want to become they want to become part of what we've got going here. So I'm very appreciative to our, not just our our Southern Miss fan base, basketball fan base. I'm 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 thankful and grateful for uh, the people of Hattiesburg and South Mississippi for embracing uh, our, our players and our program. So anyway, but both of back kind of wrapping that up, both of those young men, Nefta and, and Andre, have, have both uh, been through a tremendous amount. Um, I, I'm, I'm just incredibly impressed with their resiliency and their toughness and, and how they keep bouncing back. And again, I, what both of those young men have been through, I, I don't know if I would have, I think I would have probably just thrown the towel in. But uh, they keep bouncing back. They got some toughness about them, which is why they'll be successful of course, like not just not just in the present, they'll be successful later on in life. One more question. I uh, just wanted to ask you. Um, I'm not sure what your relationship is with Coach McNeilis, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts on McNeilis. Well, well, I'll, I'll, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I, 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 very easy. Uh, first of all, as a little boy, we're we're our families are from the same from Hancock County, and uh, and, and and Coach McNeilis, when she played at Hancock North Central High School. Um, my cousin, Roland Ladner, was the head, bas head boys basketball coach there, of course. As I was getting old enough to love basketball, and we, we still, being, my dad being from down in the Kill community, we, and, and of course uh, our, our cousin uh, that we were very close to, I referred to as an uncle, being the head boys coach, we, we would go as a little fellow, we'd go watch him play a lot. Well, we would always get there for the girls game, and uh, basketball in Hancock County is like Indiana. Yeah, I mean it's very it's, it's serious business, and uh, they've got a great had a great basketball tradition. I put all that in context to say we would always get there early and to go watch Coach Joy play. And she was the first girls player that played like a you didn't tell it. There was no difference in her and the boys. I mean, quick, she quick off the floor, athletic, highly competitive, and she was such a great player. She was one of my favorite players. Well, it worked out that she came when we were just beginning our women's program here at USM. She was one of our first stars. And uh, we would come to all the games, you know, and, and again, so that was somebody that I always looked up to, have always had a close relationship with. Uh, myself and our family loves Coach, and uh, she's been great to me from the time that I've walked in the door here. And uh, my, our, our daily thought and prayer is with Coach that she can beat this just terrible disease that, that uh, is afflicting her and so many other people around the world. And uh, so, so, and, but it, you talk about toughness. Uh, that's a, that's another one, you know, that just continues. I mean, again, I, I can only put myself in that same shoe, faced with the same things that she's been faced with. 
i'm i don't know if i could do it and she does it was such an incredible attitude and you know and and energy at it's just amazing and to be honest with you at the end of the day it's very inspiring so uh coach knows we we talk a lot i i'm i'm thankful for her uh and she's a very very special person and i don't know if she realized because she's so humble uh how much she means to me personally and 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 so many other people thank you coach thanks coach